My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor of Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my worship services, amen, every Sunday at 11 a.m., and for Bible study every Thursday night at 7 p.m. I want to thank you for joining me and my members, amen, Brother Roland and Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and her beautiful husband, Stan, Brother Harry Evans, amen, hallelujah, and we want to remember his beautiful wife, amen, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who the Lord took home to be with him, amen, on March the 4th, 2022. She is a pillar of this ministry, and she will always be acknowledged, and she will always be remembered as a member of this ministry, as long as I'm the pastor of it, and I will always be the pastor of Christ Our Life Ministries. When Pastor Red passes away, Christ of a life ministry passes away. Amen. Because this is the vision that God gave me when I was laying on a cot in Egypt in 1993. Hallelujah. You want to thank you for joining my sister church. Amen. Spirit of Liberty's ministries, pastored by the phenomenal minister Kenya King and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. Amen. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. My brother. It's 7 p.m. bringing the word of God. We love you, Pastor King. Praise God for safe traveling mercies on your way back to Columbus, Casita, Georgia. Amen. We love you and your wife. Join him. Speak of Liberty's Ministries every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. I am on YouTube, amen. I am on YouTube. Hallelujah. I got over 200 messages on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Roderick Red and hit the search button. I will come up in a white shirt with a beautiful smile on my face because I love you, amen. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me today. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Today's message, today's message, Christ, the key to obtaining the promises of God. Christ, the key to obtaining the promises of God. Jesus said in John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can take whatever road you want to take. You can go through whatever ministry you want to go through. Go whichever way you want to go. But there's only one way you're going to come unto the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no man, whether you call yourself a Christian, a Catholic, a non-denominationalist, a Baptist, a, in the, a Lutheran, in the name of Jesus, it don't matter. Hallelujah. You can only get unto the Father by coming through his Son, who is Jesus Christ. So what we need to do is we need to start acknowledging the Son and not ministries. We need to start acknowledging the Son and not people. We need to start acknowledging the sun and not flamboyant, hallelujah, pastors. Hallelujah. Christ is the key in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. It's a lot of cars in the world. Hallelujah. If you go outside and get on the road, you'll notice that there are a lot of cars, but I'm here to tell you, each car is driven by its own key, and in life, the life that God wants us to live, he 
which we may be able to live that life uh, and obtain his promises. Uh, and that is through his only begotten son who told us, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto my father. Hallelujah. That's what he should have said. I would have appreciated, but the way he said it is beautiful. But the way Pastor Red would have said it, he would have said, No man cometh unto my father but by me in the name of Jesus. No man cometh unto the father but by me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Give people time to join the telecast. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for another day in the land of the living. Thank you for another opportunity to tell you that we love you. Hallelujah. I ain't come to preach no stupid Easter message. Hallelujah. Yeah, I called it a stupid Easter message. Hallelujah. We done, trition, we done traditionalized the word of God, like every time we get to this time of the year and we call it Easter, that we want to preach an Easter message. Mm-mm, uh-uh, hallelujah. Y'all know it means the resurrection. Hallelujah, God is resurrect. Hallelujah, Easter's every day. Easter's every day. Hallelujah, every day God is raising somebody from the deadness of sin. Hallelujah. It's every day. Ain't gonna focus on no Easter. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We gotta get out of this traditional stuff. We gotta stop flowing with the world in the with y'all. Hallelujah. We ready to live. Hallelujah. With the key. Do you know how to live with the key? Do you know anything about the key? The one and only key. The only key that can bring you unto the Father. Do you know that key? Do you spend time with that key? We're going to learn about the key today. We're going to find out just how much you possess the key. Key, uh, that is the way, the truth, and the life uh, that no man without it. You can't come unto the Father without it. Hallelujah. Christ, the key to obtaining the promises of God. Hallelujah. Promise. What is a promise? Well, first of all, what is a key? Let's stay with the board. Let's stay with the board. A key. Let's see now. What is a key? A key. Hallelujah. A key is something with incision cuts. Hallelujah. It is something with incision cuts uh, to fit bars in a lock to open it. You know, inside of a lock, it's got bars. And so you got, so as, as this key fits these bars, these bars begin to open and then the latch opens. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Christ uh, is the one with the incision cuts. Uh, they cut him up uh, before they put him on the cross. Uh, they beat him to death. Uh, they cut him to pieces uh, before they put him on the cross. Uh, Cause a key uh, has to be cut. Uh, you might buy it uh, in Lowe's or Home Depot, but it ain't got no cuts in it. Uh, so you take it uh, to the key maker in the name of Jesus. And then the key maker starts putting incision cuts on it so that it can open the lock in the name of Jesus. It was after the precision cuts was put on him on this day that y'all call Easter. Hallelujah. He had precision cuts. And on this day that y'all call Easter, that he rose from the dead, he was unlocked so that all of us 
that receive them same type of incision cuts may come unto the Father by him because he was the first one that received the incision cuts. The definition of the word incision is a surgical cut made in skin or flesh. Incision. Incision is a surgical cut made in, in skin or flesh. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Promise. What is a promise? A promise is something that will be done in the future. Hallelujah. A promise is something that will be done in the future. But every promise of God, hear me now, every promise of God, hallelujah, I know the Bible Bible, you will find a bunch of promises of God. God bless you, Brother Josh McCow. I love you. Thank you for joining me. In the name of Jesus, there are a lot of promises in the word of God, but what somebody, ain't, all they're telling you is the promises, but they ain't focusing on the fact that every promise of God has conditions in the name of Jesus. What is conditions? Conditions is affairs affecting the way. Hallelujah. I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, hallelujah. Conditions. Every condition, every promise of God has conditions. Hallelujah. God's promises have conditions. When we obey him, we receive what has been promised. Hallelujah. You got to Paying to receive what was promised. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lot's wife didn't obey, so she didn't receive the promise. The man of God from Judah didn't obey, so he didn't receive the promise. Achan did not obey, so he didn't obtain the promise. In the name of Jesus, you want me to tell you why? You ain't obtaining the promise. It's because you ain't obeying the word of God. You don't possess the key yet. You don't possess the key yet. Because if you possess the key, who is Christ? Because the Bible says, now under the key that is able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless before him at the coming of his glory. You don't possess the key. You can say you're a Christian all you want. You can say you're saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled all you want. But if you who ain't a to the conditions of the promise, you don't possess it. Hallelujah, you don't possess it. Every promise of God has conditions. Affairs affecting the way in which people live, especially with regard to their safety and well-being. That's what conditions is. Affairs, what is affairs? Affairs is events that have been previously referred to. Events that have been previously referred, referred to. Events that have been previously referred to affecting the way in which people live, especially with regard to their safety or well-being. Hallelujah, my favorite motto says, amen, the instructions you follow, the instructions you follow will create the future you live in. The instructions you follow will create the future you live in. You living in a poverty life, that's because you followed instructions that lead you to living a poverty life. You living out on the street homeless, that's because you followed the instructions that put you on the street to being homeless. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God for, for doctrine, it, and it is profitable. God bless you. I mean, Ezra, I love your daughter. Hallelujah. All scripture, 
All scriptures. See that? See that's what I'm trying to tell you. All scriptures. See, all of this is the Holy Bible. All of this is scripture, and it is given by the inspiration of God. But I'm gonna teach y'all something today. I'm gonna teach you something today. Let me write it up here. God just put it back in my spirit. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All scripture. It's given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable. Him and that's profitable. All scripture is profitable because it was given by the inspiration of God. Hallelujah. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, instructions in righteousness. Hallelujah. Romans 4 and 3 says, Abraham believed God. Hallelujah. Here we go. Abraham believed God. See, the promises of God is conditional. Hallelujah is conditional. It deals, hallelujah, it affects the affairs. It's the affairs, it affects the way a person lives. In the name of Jesus, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness. Hallelujah, credited. Hallelujah, what is a promise? What is a promise? A promise is, hallelujah, something that will be done in the future. So you got to have good credit. If you want to buy a car, you better have a good credit. If you want to buy a car next year, because they're going to check your credit report. They're going to check you. think you're just going to go and somebody going to give you a $300,000 loan on a house. No, they're going to check your credit in the name of Jesus. And if you're going to get good credit, they're going to say, cut the check. Hallelujah. They're going to say, cut the check when you got good credit in the name of Jesus. God's going to tell his angel, cut the key. Cut the key. Hallelujah. When you first when you first get a promise of God, it ain't got no incision cuts in it. But when you begin to obey the word of God, God's going to tell your angel, cut the key. Hallelujah. Cut the key. Hallelujah. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God for instruction in righteousness, for instruction in Christ, for instruction in in the key, in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Sister Selena. We're talking about obtaining the promises of God, possessing the right key, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 says, But of him that is God, but of God are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us, Wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Hallelujah. The key. Christ is the key. Hallelujah. The key to obtaining the promises of God are connected to righteousness. Hallelujah. Romans 3 and 23 says the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith uh, in the key of God for all those who believe. See, wherever you see the word, wherever you see the word righteousness, I mean, I mean, you talk about God. You talk about Paul put everything in one verse. Put Paul put it all for us in Romans 3 and 23. Paul put righteousness in that verse. Paul put God in that verse. Paul put faith in that verse. Paul put Jesus Christ in that verse. Paul put belief in that verse. And then he put, there is no distinction in that verse. Hallelujah. The key to obtaining the promises of God are connected to what you believe in his one and only begotten son. In the name of Jesus, it ain't got nothing to do with you believing 
in some pastor. It ain't got nothing to do with you believing in Billy Graham. It ain't got nothing to do with you believing in Oral Roberts. It ain't got nothing to do with you believing in T.D. Jakes. It's got to do with you believing in the only begotten Son of God, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe. For there is no distinction. I don't want to never be famous. I hope God don't never allow me to experience a mega church. I want to stay just like I am in the name of Jesus. Because if I stay like I am, I ain't got to deal with a bunch of self-righteous. Think they got it together. Think they know who God is. People that don't know nothing about how to connect righteousness to faith in Jesus Christ. Lessons and the promises of God that are all over the place in the Holy Bible. You know, people don't even know how to get them. Running around saying they saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled and can't obtain nothing. Can't obtain nothing. Ain't obtaining nothing but sadness in a miserable life. Hallelujah. Because the one thing they, the pastors today ain't telling them. The one thing the church people ain't telling them today. They telling them all about Jesus. They telling them all about God. But they're not telling them about Hallelujah, the conditions that you have to deal with when you want to receive the promises of God. Sister Selena, they're telling them about Jesus. Everybody going to fill up the church today. They're going to come in there with their brand new clothes on, looking pretty. Them when they got their fingernails done. Them when they got their toenails done. Them when they got their makeup done. Them when they got their hair done. Them when they got their brand new earrings they are ready then when they got some brand new shoes in the name of Jesus they got all that stuff but they don't know the first thing about righteousness the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe for there is no distinction in the name of Jesus hallelujah y'all gonna hear me today Y'all going to hear me today. I'm going to preach this thing today. You watch and see. And this righteousness. Here we go. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For all those who believe. For there is no distinction. Hallelujah. Here we go. And this righteousness. This righteousness that Abraham had. Abraham, Abraham had a righteousness because he believed God. And this righteousness cannot be born. This righteousness cannot be lived until self-righteousness is dead. The only way that you can live by the righteousness of God is self-righteousness has to die. What is self-righteousness? Self-righteousness is when you depend on yourself. You think you know everything. You think you know exactly how you supposed to live how you supposed to go about life you can only see things your way and if you and if somebody else try to tell you god's way you hate them self-righteousness when you depend on yourself to earn salvation to earn god's promises hallelujah when you depend on yourself to earn salvation rather than trusting and depending on the name of Jesus rather than depending and trusting on Christ Jesus to make a way for you out of no way you always want to go your way even though the Bible tells us in Proverbs 16 and 25 and Proverbs 14 and 12 that there is a way that seemeth Right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Righteousness cannot be born 
until self-righteousness is dead. Hallelujah. Millions of people. Hear me now. This, I'm finna get into my message where I want to get to. Millions of people have in their possession the key. How do I know that to be true? How do I know that to be true? Well, the way I know that to be true is because y'all running around saying you're Christians. You're running around with tattoos of, of the cross on your body, running around with tattoos of Jesus, on, running around with shirts with saying, with Jesus is Lord and Savior my life, the shirts running around talking about he is risen. Oh, you got the key. Hallelujah. But you ain't meeting the conditions for possessing that key. Hallelujah. Millions of people have in their possession the key to obtaining the promises of God. They have in their possession the key to obtaining the promises of God. It's a shame for me to give you a key to my car and you don't drive it. The only conditions for you not to be able to drive my car is I didn't give you the key. If you drive my car without the key, then you're a thief and you're a robber. But if I give you the key like God gave us his son, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Millions of people have in their possession the key to obtaining the promises of God. What key? What key, Pastor Red? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Not the law. Not the law. The key to obtaining the promises of God is not the law. It is the promise. It is, it is the word of God. The word of God. The promise was given before the law was given. The promise was given to Abraham before the law was given. Do you want me to tell you what in it? How do I know this? God bless you, Brother Everett. I love you. How do I know that, hallelujah, the promise was given before the law was given? The promise was given when God gave Abraham and Isaac, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac, and he told Abraham, take Isaac, thine son, and sacrifice him up on the mountain and Abraham took Isaac up on top of the mountain and put him on the altar and he raised the knife up. He wanted to make an incision. He wanted to make a surgical cut in the Isaac's skin. But God said, uh-uh, stop right there. I got a ram in the bush make an incision in the dagger until the real ram shows up. And when Abraham got the knife up and he didn't make the cut, God, hallelujah, cut the covenant. Hallelujah. He cut the covenant with Abraham. That through him, all seed, all nations and tribes of the earth would be blessed. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. What key am I talking about? I'm talking about the word of God. In the name of Jesus, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God for instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be, hallelujah, thoroughly furnished, may be perfect and thoroughly furnished under all good works. Hallelujah. Now the Bible Gives us two keys, Brother Everett. Hallelujah. The Bible gives us two keys, though, Ev. Hallelujah. It gives us the Old Testament. And it gives us the New Testament. It gives us two keys. We put it into one book. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, we got 39 keys. Hallelujah. And in the New Testament, 
we got 27 keys. When you put it together, you got 66 keys. Man was created on the sixth day. Everybody want to know what 666 is. 666 is the 66 books of the Bible, including man, hoping that man will walk around in belief in the Word of God. And if you don't walk around in belief in the Word of God as the 666, then you are the Antichrist. Stop looking for the 666, calling it the Antichrist. I just told you what it was. The Antichrist uh, is the 66 books of the Bible and man having received the 66 books that is the inspiration of God, man being number six, uh, walking around in unbelief that is called the Antichrist. That is called the Antichrist. Y'all gonna hear me today. You're going to hear me today. I'm going to preach this thing today. Y'all want to know what some resurrection is? I'm going to teach you what the resurrection is. Hallelujah. The Bible gives us two keys. Hallelujah. In order for these two keys to work, uh, you need a man to make them work. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, you got the Old Testament key. Who is the old man, Adam. Hallelujah. Then we got Saul. Saul and then... Hallelujah. That is the B.C. That is the B.C. I wrote the B.C. Hallelujah. Then you got the New Testament. The new man. Christ. Hallelujah. Paul. The after death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. B.C. Before Christ. A.D. After death. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You got a life that you live before Christ came. That is the Old Testament. You got a life that you're supposed to live after the death of Christ. That is the A.D. Saul went around persecuting the church in the B.C. key. Hold you. He was using the B.C. key. He was using the Old Testament key to persecute God's church. Until he got on the road to Damascus. Uh, and then the Lord uh, slapped him down. Uh, the way the truth and the light said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? When Saul got up, his name was Paul. Uh, he had a new key. Uh, and he went about teaching the people about the A.D. Hallelujah. He went about teaching the people about the A.D. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Paul says. Hallelujah. Faith in Jesus has made me righteous. Faith in Jesus has made me righteous. Hallelujah. And he found in Here we go. Philippians 3 and 9. And be found in him. Hallelujah. Are you in Christ? If you went to water baptism. Yes you are. And be found in him. Not having Mine own righteousness, not having self-righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, be found in him, hallelujah, that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Hallelujah. This is what Christ did. Christ gave some, he, see in the Old Testament, he gave them priests and prophets. Hallelujah. In the A.D., in the B.C., he gave them priests and prophets. In the A.D., he gave them apostles and prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. And the law is not a faith. You better read Galatians 3 and 12. The law is not a faith. 
He gave the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. Where do you when where did you see priests in there at? Where did you see priests in there at? He ain't gave the church no priest. He is the high priest. He is the only priest that you need. Why do you think he rent the veil into in twain? So that you can come into the Holy of Holies and talk to the high priest face to face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave the church the fivefold ministry until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Not the knowledge of paying tithes and not paying tithes. Not in the knowledge of some stupid Palm Sunday. Not in the knowledge of some stupid Easter. Not in the knowledge of some stupid Christmas. Till we all come in the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Unto the measure. Unto the measure. I need you to hold on to that word measure for me. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The New Testament key did this. The New Testament key did this. Hallelujah. The reason why many of you have not, have not been obtaining the promises of God is because you have received Christ as life but are using the wrong key to obtaining the promises of God. The reason why many of you have not been obtaining the promises of God is because you have been using the wrong key to obtaining the promises of God. Your faith is channeled in the wrong way. Your faith should be in Jesus Christ. Your faith should not be in the B.C., in the Old Testament. It is there for our learning, but not for our living. Because Christ should be doing all the living for you. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Let's look at the keys Paul and Silas used when they put him in jail. And we're going to see if you use that same key when people do you wrong for living by faith in the name of Jesus. Uh, Acts 16, 22 through 28 says, the magistrates ordered Paul and Silas to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown in the prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully when he received these orders uh, he put them in the inner cell uh, and fastened their feet uh, in the stocks uh, but it was about midnight uh, that Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. See, hallelujah, it comes with a condition. The Bible says uh, that God inhabits uh, the praises of his people. Us uh, were praying and singing hymns to God, uh, and the other prisoners uh, listening to them were listening to them. Then suddenly there was a violent earthquake at the foundation of the prison were shaken and at once uh, the prison doors flew open. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Uh, cut the key. Hallelujah. God told the angel, I don't know what type of key uh, that jailer got, uh, but I want you uh, to cut the same key and let my children uh, out of prison. Uh, do you possess uh, the belief in God uh, to sing uh, songs and hymns uh, and pray to him until he tells your angel, cut the key. Cut the key. Hallelujah. Cut the key in the name of Jesus. Suddenly, there was a such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prisons was shaken at once. 
Oh, see, when the angels show up, some things gonna start shaking. It's gonna be a violent shake in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jacob was running away from Esau, he got in the Bethel and then he got sleepy. So he took some stones and he set them up and then he began dreaming. He saw a ladder descending out of heaven and the angels going up and down it. And when he woke up, he said, this is a dreadful place. This is none other than the house of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because it seemed violent to him in the name of Jesus. There was a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the doors flew open because the angel had cut the key. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came off. Hallelujah. The reason why everybody's chains ain't coming off that's in your life is because you don't possess the keys that Paul and Silas possess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The jailer woke up. Hallelujah. And when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. It's just that you can't lock you can't lock down a child of God. Ain't nothing on earth can lock down a child of God when they pray and sing hymns to God. When they've been beat all day and all night long. Ain't nothing on earth can lock down a child of God. Hallelujah. Let's look at, hallelujah, Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 through 28. Let's look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 and 28. Let's look at the key a grieving mother used. Hallelujah. Behold, a woman of Canaan. There we go, a woman of Canaan. I need you to hold on to that. Because Canaan was the promised land that the children of Israel were to inherit. Canaan was the promised land that God gave Abraham when he cut the key after Abraham decided he wanted to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, there was a woman living in the promised land of the Israelites, and she came out of the same coast and cried unto Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. I don't got the key. Hallelujah, to get up free from this devil. So I'm coming to you because I know that you are the way. I know that you are the truth. And I know that you are the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by you. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, not a word. Mm-mm, lady. What you just said, I'm not... That, that ain't, I'm not cutting no key with that. You're not getting no key cut with that. You're going to do better than that. Later, if you want a key cut, you're going to do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his disciples besought him, saying, Lord, send our way, for she crieth after us. Hallelujah. But he answered and said, I ain't sent to cut no key for y'all. I've sent, I've been sent to cut the key for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped him. Hallelujah. She's trying to figure out. She's figuring out. Uh, she's figuring out uh, how to get the key cut. Uh, worship will cut the key. Hallelujah. Then she came and worshiped him. See, it don't say nothing up here about she worshiped him. It says she came crying. Hallelujah. But this time... She came worshiping. See, you got to add worship with your crying. Hallelujah. She came worshiping, saying, Lord, help me cut me a key for my daughter. Cut me a key. But he answered and said, 
It is not me to take the children's bread in the cast. It, uh, uh I can't give you the children's key. I can't give you the children's key because you ain't you ain't a part of the of the of the covenant. Ephesians two and twelve. Remembering that at the time you were separate from Christ. Being aliens, this woman was an alien. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers. See, she was a stranger to the covenants of promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. This woman of Canaan qualified for Ephesians 2 and 12. But because she came in worshiped him, he told her, ah, oh, lady, I know you're worshiping me. I know you're worshiping me, but uh, but this key, this key right here, I, I'm, I'm, I only came to give it to the to the child to the lost sheep of Israel. I can't give it to you. And she said, "Truth, Lord." She told him, John fourteen and six, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. I know that I am a stranger to the covenants of promise, but your children have been dropping a key. They've been dropping an Old Testament key. Hallelujah. But I see it's something about you. You doing something that the Old Testament key didn't do. So I'm bringing you the Old Testament key. I'm bringing you the BC key in hopes that you will give me the AD key in the name of Jesus. And then Jesus answered and said, Oh woman, great is your faith. Oh woman, you got the key cutter. You got the key cutter. Faith is the key cutter. You got the key cutter, woman. Be it unto you, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very same hour because she had the key cutter. Hallelujah. Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. In the name of Jesus, do you got the key cutter? Do you got faith? Do you got the word of God? The Bible says the word of God, faith coming by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Faith cometh by the word of God. Your favor should cut the key. The woman with the 12 year Israel blood, she said, uh, if I may but just touch uh, the AD's hem of the AD's garment, I'll be made whole. She touched it and Jesus said, Woman, uh, thy faith has made thee whole. Woman, uh, you got a key cut. You got the key cut. And that's why. You don't have a blood issue no more because you got a hold of the key to obtaining the promises of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 6 and 4 says, We have been buried with him through baptism in the death. I told you, righteousness ain't going to do you no good until self-righteousness is dead. Hallelujah. But self-righteousness should be dead if you've been buried with him through water baptism in the death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead, hallelujah, through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. God bless you, Sister King. Thank you for joining me today. Please tell me, please tell me that the key to your new life is Christ. Please tell me. Please tell me. You that are listening to me today, please tell me that the life, that the key to your new life is Christ. Please tell me that. Please tell me that the key to your new life is in Christ. Please tell me that. 
If Christ has become your life, your conditions, the affairs affecting the way in which you live, especially in regards to the safety and the well-being of your life, should have changed and you should be obtaining the promises of God because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No man. If Christ has become your life, your conditions should have changed and you should be obtaining the promises of God because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life and he has become your life. But still, even after hearing Christ tell us that he is the way, preachers are still teaching his sheep to use the BC key in the after. In the after. Even after being raised from the dead, to walk in newness of life, you still got preachers teaching the baptized sheep of God to use the BC key in the after. You don't know what the after is? You go back and you listen to my message that I preached about in the after. Here we go right here. Matthew 17, 1 through 8. Here we go right here. Finna teach this message. And after. See, it's always in the after. It's always in the after. God bless you, boo-boo. I love you, son. Thank you for joining your daddy this morning. Got my son and my daughter with me this morning. You know I'm feeling good now. But hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after six days. See, y'all want to talk about sixes. We can talk about sixes. Hallelujah. After six days, Jesus taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up into a high mountain apart. Because God is been to solve this B.C. and A.D. problem for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine. I know Moses' face shined, but so did Jesus' face shine. Jesus' face shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. See, Moses' face shined, but his raiment didn't shine. Jesus' face shined, and his raiment shined. That's why that woman said, if I may but just touch the hem of your white as light shining raiment, I shall be made whole in the name of Jesus. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. See, Moses and Elias didn't talk to Peter, James, and John. They was talking to the A.D. key because Moses and Elias had the B.C. key. Hallelujah. And now they was talking to the A.D. key. Hallelujah. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Verse 4. Then Peter said unto the A.D. key, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, Peter said, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. See, that's what's causing confusion in the church today. It's three tabernacles when it should only be one, one key governing everything that calls itself a church of the living God. And that should be the A.D. key. In the name of Jesus, Peter said, If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Hallelujah. 
I got a 1992 truck. I need a key to open the door and a key to crank it up. But I got a 2022 Mazda and I only need one key to open that car up. You see, as time changes, everything is starting to turn into one thing. In the name of Jesus, I got the cell phone. I can unlock the car with it. I can put me a nest on my house. I can unlock the door of my house. I can speak to my Amazon. It will turn the lights on. I can speak to my Amazon. It will turn the stove on. I got something, a hot water heater. I can touch my phone. It'll turn the heat up and down through one piece of equipment. But I can take this thing. I can crank up my car in the name of Jesus. Y'all, but in the, for some unknown reason, in the church today, we still got, we still got, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, three tabernacles. Got to get them out. We got to get them out. We got to get them out, hallelujah. We got to get them out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The name of Jesus. While he yet spake. But while Peter was speaking. speaking, Behold a bright cloud. Not a dark cloud. That looked like storms is finna occur. Uh uh. A bright cloud. God bless you Kobe. I love you. Thank you for joining your classmate today Kobe. Hallelujah. A bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold a voice. Her voice is finna tell them the only key that they need. A voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. You got the Bible ministry. They ain't fell on their face yet because they still got Three tabernacles going on in the church feeding God's people from three tabernacles. The disciples fell on their face and they were so afraid. You got, you got people, pastors and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. They, 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 they ain't scared. They ain't scared to preach B.C. and God in, in the A.D. church. They ain't afraid of that. And Jesus touched them. Not Moses. Moses didn't touch him. Elijah didn't touch him. Jesus touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. I am the key. I'm the only key you need. I'm the only key you need. Hallelujah. And when they and when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one. Save Jesus only. They saw no one save Jesus only. Peter said, if thou wilt. Peter said, if thou wilt. God said, but I won't. Peter said, as Renee, Reggie. Peter said, if thou wilt. But God said, but I won't. Why? Because of the damn. Hallelujah. It was because of the dam that God said it. I'm going to teach you today. Oh, I'm in the spirit. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the dam. Hallelujah. What is a dam? What is a dam? A dam is a structure built to cross a river to hold water back. A dam is a structure built. This is a structure built across a river to hold the water back. Peter said, if thou wilt, God said, but I won't because of the dam. The B.C. versus the A.D. The B.C. means before Christ. A.D. means after death. 
Moses and Elijah represents the law. Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. The AD Christ represents the new life. In the BC, God had to build dams in the name of Jesus. It was in the BC that God had to build structures to build across a river to hold back the water to get his people into the promised land in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 14, Moses got the people down by the river. Hallelujah. But the water stopped them from crossing over into Canaan, the promised land. But Moses cried unto the Lord. The Lord said, Why criest thou unto me? Tell the people to move forward. Stretch out your hands. Build a dam. Stretch out your hands. Moses built the dam out of his hands. In the name of Jesus, the water rolled back. In the name of Jesus, the people walked over to Canaan through the dam of Moses, holding back his arm with the rod. The waters was held back by the faith of Moses following what God says. Hold your arm, hold up the rod, spread them out. Watch the water roll back. They walked across on dry ground in the B.C. Hallelujah. Then when they got in the, into the wilderness and they started acting a fool and God killed off them that were not obedient. God bless you, Mom. Thank you for joining your son today. You birthed me. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But then after God had got done with them that didn't want to walk by faith, that didn't want to walk in obedience, he told Joshua, if Moses, my servant, is dead. Hallelujah. So in Joshua chapter 3, he told Joshua, build me a dam. Tell the high priest to take the ark, the, the ark of the covenant. Step into the Jordan and the waters will roll back. The high priest built God a dam. The priest built the dam when they stepped into the water. The water rolled back. Hallelujah. And the people walked out of the wilderness in the Canaan on dry land. God told Joshua, everywhere the sole of your foot touched, I'm going to give it to you because it's the covenant I cut with Abraham. You are in possession of Abraham's key, Joshua. Walk across the Jordan. Build the dam with the high priest walking with the Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. And then when we get to Second Kings, we get to Second Kings chapter 14. Elijah was walking with Elisha. He was about ready to be taken up into heaven by a fiery chariot in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When they got to the Jordan, hallelujah, Elijah took his mantle and he built the dam. He got to the Jordan and he took the mantle. He fire. He built the dam with the mantle. And him and Elisha walked across on dry land in the BC. Hallelujah. He was Moses and Joshua showed us how the people in the law could get across through the dam of God. Eliza walked across. He got into the chariot, went up, dropped the mantle. Eliza picked up the mantle, walked back to the Jordan and said, took the mantle and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Took the mantle, popped the Jordan tire. The water rolled back. He 
Elisha built the dam. Hallelujah. God had to build four dams in the B.C. Hallelujah. But don't you know he built the ark also. Noah had to build an ark because there was a flood coming and nobody wanted to get inside of the ark. Only eight souls got in the ark in the name of Jesus. It was only one ark. It wasn't three arks. It was one ark. It wasn't three. Peter said, if thou wilt, let us make your three tabernacles. The only three is the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they are one. God bless you, Sister Anne. Thank you for joining your brother today. In the name of Jesus, y'all gonna hear me today building them dams. But hallelujah, all that dam building happened in the Old Testament. That mess don't happen in the, in the A.D. In the B.C., it was dams being built. See, that's why Peter said, if thou wilt, but God said, but I won't. Why? Because of the dam in the name of Jesus. See, by the time, by the time you build a dam, it takes some time. It takes time for you to open your hands. It takes time for you to step down into the water with the, with the, with the Ark of the Covenant. It takes time for you to pop the mantle. It takes time for you to build an ark. But in the A.D., it don't take no time when it comes to messing around with the water in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 14, Jesus, the A.D., put his disciples in the boat. He said, go over to the other side. And then he went up into a mountain to pray. Hallelujah. In the first hour, he was praying. The waters weren't doing nothing. Hallelujah. In the second hour, he kept praying. The waters started acting stupid. In the third hour, hallelujah, he kept on praying. But he's seeing what's going on on the water. In the name of Jesus, uh, y'all going to hear me today. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. But the Bible says... Uh, in the fourth watch of the night, uh, when he said, uh, that's about enough uh, of this water troubling my disciples. I ain't building uh, no dam. I ain't building no dam. I'm stepping on this mess. I ain't splitting nothing. I'm walking on the water. I ain't splitting no water. I ain't building no dams in the A.D. I ain't building no dams. I'm walking on the water. Hallelujah. Dam building is over. The dam building was for the B.C. In the A.D., we don't build dams. We walk on top of our problem that's preventing us from getting and obtaining the promises of God. Do you got the key? Do you got the Christ life? Do you got the key to obtaining the promises of God? Do you got the key? Hallelujah. The A.D. says, I ain't got the time to play this rocking chair mess. I got to be about my father's business. I got to walk on top of a, you should have a life that will enable you to walk on top of adultery. To walk on top of fornication. To walk on top of of Black Lives Matter, to walk on top of being a lesbian, to walk on top of being a mason, to walk on top of being an eastern star, to walk on top of being a shrine, to walk on top of being an alpha, kappa, alpha, to walk on top of being an omega sci-fi, to walk on top of this Easter bunny mess, to walk on top. I ain't building no more dams. Hallelujah. I'm in the key cutting business. I'm about my father's business. In the name of Jesus, I'm ready. 
I'm ready to cut some keys in the name of Jesus. I'm ready to cut some keys in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you how fast he cut these keys. I'm finna tell you the Bible says that on the Mount of Golgotha, he hung on the cross and he had a thief to his left and a thief to his right. In the name of Jesus Christ, gonna cut a key hanging on the cross. But before, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, before Sister Gloria, before he said, Father, into thine hands, I commit my spirit. Before he said, Father, into thine hands, I commit my spirit. Before he gave up the ghost, one of them thieves said something to him. One of them thieves said, Master, Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. It is not documented in the Bible. It is not documented in the Bible. But Jesus said to him, Surely this day you will be with me in paradise. And after he told him that, it ain't written in the Bible. You have to get this from God, from spending time with God. After he told him that, Sister Gloria, he said to the angel, Cut the key. Get a man the key. Cut the man a key. Hallelujah. So that he can get into, into the garden of paradise. In the name of Jesus, he believes in the A.D. Cut the key. Cut the key. Hallelujah. Cut him a key. Hallelujah. I need you to cut him a key real fast too, angel. You better cut him a key before I say, Father, into thine hands I commit my spirit. Why did Jesus give the angel such an urgency to cut this man a key? The reason being is because Jesus knew that once he said, into thine hands I commit my spirit. He knew that he was going to give up the ghost. They was going to realize he was dead. And he knew that just as soon as they realized he was dead, they was going to take some sticks and break this man's legs and beat him until he was dead. Just as soon as they realized Jesus was dead, they weren't going to stay out there all day long. They broke the two thieves' legs. But the other thief, he was an idiot. He didn't asked to have a key cut. He asked the Lord to cut him down from the cross. He didn't ask to have a key cut. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus wanted that angel to cut this thief that said, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Remember me. Lord, don't forget me. Lord, remember me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your obedience to God will get you a key cut. It was in 1993. I was laying on a cot in Egypt in the name of Jesus. And the word of the Lord said, I want you to move to Augusta, Georgia. When you get out the military, I only had, amen, 10 years in at the time. Five years to be exact. Five years in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, when you get out the army, I want you to move to Augusta, Georgia. And I want you to start a church called Christ Our Life Ministries. You're going to write some books and I'm going to be with you. In the name of Jesus, I got up off the cot. I started calling on the name of the Lord. I came back from Egypt. I joined the Mount Sinai Holiness Church in Ludowicy, Georgia. Then I moved from there and I went and joined the Cathedral of Faith in Hinesville, Georgia. I moved from there. I went to Oklahoma. I've joined Abundant Life in the Word Church. 
in the name of Jesus, I moved from there. I went to Heidelberg. I joined the Mighty Warrior Christian Center, met Sister Selena, met Brother Peachy, met Minister King, met the Harvest, met the Coles. In the name of Jesus, moved on from there. God said, it's time to start Christ Our Life Ministries. Hallelujah. I told my wife, uh, we move into Augusta. God told me to go to Augusta and start a church. My wife said, ah, how you know I want to live in Augusta? I want to live in Florida. I want to live in Turkey. I want to live in Europe. I said, uh, it's about time for us to separate because I got to go to Augusta. Hallelujah. From the time I pulled into Augusta, the God told the angel, cut the key. He walking in obedience. Hallelujah. I was riding up the road when I got here in the name of Jesus. I rode past this church. I looked at it. God said, that's the building. Go get the building. Hallelujah. Went and got the building. Ain't never had no members. Ain't never had nobody. Just walking by faith. Walking by faith. Letting God cut the key. Letting God cut the key. People done came and left me. People done stabbed me in the back. Family members don't like the way I preach. Friends don't like the way I preach. Pastors don't like the way I preach. God said, cut the key. Cut the key. Cut the key. I want you to cut one key. I want you to cut the name of your ministry. Christ, our life ministries. Cut the key. Don't you put three tabernacles in there. Cut the key. Cut the key. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you been allowing God to cut the key for you? Hallelujah. The way to get God to cut your key, the way to obtain the promises of God, you got to walk in obedience to the word of God. You got to walk by what Jesus says and not by what Moses says or by what Elisha says, but by the A.D. You got to walk in the A.D. You got to walk in the A.D. You got to stop walking in the B.C. You're going to have to walk in the A.D. You're going to have to walk in the A.D. The only way to obtain the promises of God in the New Testament is you're going to have to walk in the A.D. You're going to have to walk in the A.D. You're going to have to walk in the new man, the Christ life, if you want to obtain the promises of God because God is doing everything through his son. He ain't doing nothing through the law. He's doing everything through the son. He's doing everything through the son. Hallelujah. They made all these surgical cuts into his skin. After they made all these cuts into his skin, I told you that's how you make a key. Something with incision cuts to fit the bars and a lock to open it. Hallelujah. So many bars, so many sins, so many iniquities. The word of God, the key, the blood of God will unlock every sin in your life. But you can only do it in the new man. The new man possesses the key to do incision cuts on every part of your body that don't want to line up with the word of God every time you walk in obedience God tells your angel cut the key every time you walk in obedience God tells your angel cut the key you want to know why you ain't getting obtaining the promises and the blessings of God it is because you walking around with an uncut key Hallelujah, I promise you, if you walk in obedience, he will tell your angel, cut the key. He'll tell your angel to cut the key. He'll tell him, and that angel got to cut that key. That angel got to cut that key. You think I'm lying to you? Watch this right here. 
Nebuchadnezzar built the fiery furnace, wanted to get the people of God to walk around in the key that he made up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, not going to happen. He built this fiery furnace, but what Nebuchadnezzar didn't know, that Jesus, the key to obtaining the promises of God, was already in the fiery furnace. He'd already prepared a room for Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego to stand in. Once they threw him into the fire, when they threw him into the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's belief uh, cut the key. Cut the key. Put him in a room that Nebuchadnezzar's fire couldn't touch. And Nebuchadnezzar looked in there and said, did not we throw three men in the fire? But I see four. And the fourth looks like the son of man. Y'all gonna hear me today. Hallelujah. You better start walking in the A.D. You better stop being stupid. Know that you are a son of God. Many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God, not by the law of Moses. Many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. You are the A.D. You are the A.D. Cut the key. You got a doggone angel, ain't touched your key. You got the key. When you came up by the water baptism, you got the key. The problem is, has it been getting cut? Has it been getting cut? Because God already told me, son, your key's been cut. You done moved to Augusta. You done started your church. You done wrote some books. Your key is cut, but son, I got to tell you something, one day I'm going to have to cut you out of the skin that you got from Beatrice Red on 12 September 1965. I'm going to have to cut you out of that skin. When I cut you out of that skin, you ain't going to be able to talk to Reggie and Ezra no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to Sister Selena no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to Sister Gloria no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to Kobe no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to your brother Mike no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to your sister Jackie no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to any of your cousins no more. You ain't going to be able to talk to Minister King and Sister King no more. Hallelujah, but don't worry about nothing. You, your key has been cut. You walked in obedience. You have done what I told you to do on that cot in Egypt. Your key is cut. Stay faithful. Keep preaching my word, but I got to cut you out of that body that you got from Beatrice Red on September the 12th. 1965, but your key's cut. Your key's cut. I'm waiting on you, son, and I'm going to tell you, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord, because you withstood the meanness of people towards you, the backstabbing of people towards you, and all you did was get up every Thursday and every Sunday, and go preach my word, even when there was nobody but you, in 70 empty chairs, you still did what I told you to do in the absence of members. In the absence of members, the stuff that you was doing, Pastor Red, every time you did it, I told your angel, to cut the key. Let them talk about you. Let them not believe in what you preach. Keep preaching, keep doing what you're doing, Pastor Red, because every time you do it, I, your angel cuts the key. Do you get that word from God? Do you get that word from God? If you're not an obedient person, I can tell you right now, you ain't getting no key cut. Part two of this message will be Thursday night. If you want to hear part two of this message, 
That's why I had to stop and go back to the front because I didn't want y'all to see part two of this message that's on the PowerPoint slide Thursday night at 7 p.m. Part two of this message of Cut the Key. I will preach it. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you. Amen and amen.